Take your hero to any place. To the city. Or to the forest. Can be hot. Or can be cold. Let your hero be a different person. Or something else. Learn how. First, you will create the base Laura scene. Blend your main character with any background you want. With a combination of control nets for the foreground and background, and by using conditional masking, you will be able to perfectly blend your hero with any background you want. Then by using Animate Diff, you can create amazing animations. For this tutorial, I assume you will have Comfy UI and Comfy UI Manager installed. The materials and workflows you can download from the Civit AI article the link in the description. Go to the Civit AI page. You will see a detailed step-by-step -step guide for this tutorial. In attachments on the top right of the page, download the input zip file. Download also the Animate Diff Instant LoRa Base Workflow JSON to use in this example. You can also download the final workflow of the tutorial. Open the input zip file. Extract the contents. Copy the unzipped files into the input folder in Comfy UI. Now in Comfy UI, drag and drop the instant LoRa Animate Diff workflow over the canvas. If the custom nodes of the workflow are not installed, an error will pop up. Do not worry, you can easily install them. Go to the manager. Click on Install Missing Nodes. Select all the items on the list and install them. When the installation is complete, in the manager again update Comfy UI. This way you make sure the nodes are working with the latest version. Restart Comfy UI to apply the update. Refresh also your browser. As you see, all the red nodes and errors have disappeared. The next step is to install all the models in their corresponding folders. The list can also be found in the description. I will not explain here how and where to install them. If you want to know how to build the instant LoRa and animate diff base workflow, I invite you to see my other tutorial about it. After installation of the models, click on the refresh button. Then, check that the correct models are loaded in each of the different model loaders. Start with a short test of 4 frames to see that the workflow works. Use any image you want to test the LoRa. Once we know that the base workflow works correctly, let's start with creating the LoRa scene. Add two load image nodes. One is for the main character and the other for the background. It is convenient you resize both images to same size of the composition you are going to make. In this case, we do 512 width and 768 length. Now we are going to rotoscope our hero. Add the impact simpler detector SEGS node. Add the ultralytics detector provider. Select the body model and connect it to the BBOX input in the simple detector. Connect also to the SAM loader. Convert your segments to masks using the SEGS to mask node. Now combine your foreground and background using the image composite mask node. Connect your background to the destination and the foreground to the source input. Connect also the mask that you have created. Add a preview image node and queue your workflow to see how it looks like. With the settings of the detector, we see that more than one image has been created. In the original image, there were some human figures in the background that were detected by the node. In this case, we will increase the threshold to 0.85 to make sure the people from the back are not detected. Now only one person is our LoRa base image. To avoid artifacts, we want that the reference image covers similar area as our open pose images. To do that, we can manipulate the size and the position of our main character. Change the width of the resizing to 448 pixels and the height to 624. Change the position of the character by setting X to 35 and Y to 250. That looks about right, let's continue. 
Connect your new created image to the reroute node that is used for the LoRa. Test again the workflow to see the effect. We see that the hero has now changed the scene and it is placed in a beautiful snowy town. Add now the control net sequences for the background. Copy the load images nodes and make sure they point to the MSLD and ZOE depth maps directories. Connect the INT output from the open pose load image node to the load image cap input node from the other two load image nodes. If you are using frames from a video, you may want to use the corresponding preprocessors. We will add one control net for the ZOE depth maps and one for the MSLD. Note that we do not connect here the positive and negative conditionings of these control net with the open pose control net of the foreground. Select the correct control net models. Check that the right frames are loaded. Now you will create a mask that will determine the area where your hero will be placed in the animation. Add two color to mask nodes. Connect your open pose frames to both color to mask nodes. In the first color to mask node, set the values of red, blue and green to 255. Set the threshold value to zero. In the second one, set the values of the colors to 100. Set the threshold to 168. Connect the two mask outputs to a mask composite node. Set operation to add. Connect the mask to the growth mask with blur node. Set the expand value to 100, the blur radius to 20, and the sigma to 1.7. This group of nodes creates a mask for the foreground, and the inverted one with the background. We are going to use these masks and combine them with control net using the conditional mask nodes. Add two conditional mask nodes. We will use them for the positive conditionings of the two control net sequence. In the first one, we will connect the positive conditioning of the open pose control net with the input of the node. We will connect the mask to the corresponding input of the conditioning mask node. In the second, we connect the positive conditioning of the MLSD and depth maps control nets. And the we connect the inverse mask. Doing it this way, the conditionings are applied to the foreground and background independently. However, the blurriness of the edges of the masks allows that foreground and background do not show as really separated elements. Now, we combine both using a conditioning combined node. This is then connected to the positive conditioning input of the K-sampler. Finally, change the set conditioning area parameter of the background to mask bounds. For the negative conditionings, we follow the same procedure. We connect the negative conditionings to two different conditioning mask nodes. For the foreground node, we use the mask, and for the background the inverted mask. Then, we combine them. However, in my experience it's sometimes better to directly combine the negative conditionings without any masking. Try and test how it works in your case. Don't forget also to adjust the control net parameters, so the animation is consistent for both the foreground and the background. For a final test of the workflow, set your number of frames to 12, so an anime diff can show a more accurate example of what you will expect. After rendering, we check the animation looks as we want. We can adjust the different parameters of the control nets or the LORAS, depending on what we want to achieve with the animation. If we are satisfied, we can run the complete animation. To render the complete animation, set the total numbers of frames to zero. This will process all the open pose frames, which determine the length of the animation. In addition to the animation workflow, 
You have a couple of additional groups to detail the face details and to interpolate the frames. You do not have to, but activate them if you want to get even more detailed and smooth animations. You have created your animation. A beautiful warrior running in the snow. By changing your character and the background, you can create different but yet amazing animations. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you have liked it. Check in the description all the information for the method. And see you soon.